In this final module, we'll show you the methods of reporting severe weather to the National Weather Service in Lubbock and also cover several tips on how to keep yourself safe while storm spotting. So here are the storm reports we need from you, arranged in order of importance and urgency. Obviously, a tornado of any size or intensity should be reported immediately, but this also extends to funnel clouds. Storm damage is also very important, and this can range from something as minor as tree branches or power lines being down to complete devastation of structures. If you notice rotation at the base of a thunderstorm, recall from our earlier modules that it's important to watch this for persistence. Rotation that's short-lived isn't of concern to us, but on the other hand, if you see organized rotation for a couple of minutes or more, then we definitely will want to know about it. Regarding hail, we encourage you to report even small hailstones, but if the hail is one inch or greater in diameter, then we really need that information. Similarly, if you estimate winds of 58 miles per hour or more, or notice flooding, especially on roads, those are reports we need to have. And lastly, reports of a wall of dust or low visibilities of one half mile or less due to blowing dust are also very beneficial to us. As a storm spotter, it's important to know that you're not interrupting the National Weather Service with your storm report or thinking we're too busy to accommodate it. It's also a good idea to submit your report as soon as possible, provided it's safe for you to do so, and not wait until the next day. We're here 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, so if you have a storm report, you can either call it in directly to our office at the number shown here, or if it's more convenient, you can also submit the report online using your computer or mobile smartphone. Here is how you access the online storm report submission by going to our homepage located at weather.gov forward slash Lubbock. Scroll down and look for the submit a storm report link in the lower left within the blue column. This link will take you to an electronic form that you fill out with as much detail as possible before clicking the review report button at the bottom and submitting it. These are some recommendations we have for all spotters when making your storm report. First and foremost, report only what you see and not what you think a storm might do. Avoid exaggeration and be mindful of your choice of words when describing the event. Also be as precise as possible with either the event's location or your location and be sure to let us know which you're reporting. Tools such as GPS are valuable in determining your location, especially when in remote areas. Also, estimating distances on the South Plains of Texas can be very challenging given so few features for reference in large flat stretches. Oftentimes, a storm or tornado appears much closer than it really is in this region of the Great Plains. Estimating wind speed is difficult, but it's made easier provided you have trees or structures within sight. This is a table that will help you estimate just how strong the winds really are. Typically on the Texas South Plains, we'll see some blowing dust become lofted in the air when either the sustained wind or gusts reach 30 to 40 miles per hour. When these speeds reach 40 to 55 miles per hour or more, widespread blowing dust and even dangerous dust storms can develop. Hailstones come in many different sizes and shapes and can be difficult to size up as some shatter after hitting the ground. Since most storm spotters won't have a ruler with them to easily measure the size of a hailstone, the best way to report a hailstone's size is by comparing it to common athletic balls, such as ping pong balls, golf balls, tennis balls, and all the way up to softball size. Try to avoid the use of marble-sized hail as marbles come in different sizes. Now that we established how to report severe weather, it's important to keep yourself safe when storm spotting. Here are the most common threats to storm spotters, particularly here on the Texas South Plains. Believe it or not, thick blowing dust is not uncommon with severe thunderstorms in this region. But far more destructive than dust storms are hail storms, and the South Plains of Texas have certainly seen its share of these events every year. In fact, on April 29th of 2012, a significant hailstorm with some hailstones as large as softballs caused immense property damage in portions of eastern Hockley and southern Lubbock counties. 
As if the giant hail alone wasn't bad enough, the hail was driven by straight line winds that measured up to 90 miles per hour at times, causing severe damage to roofs, sidings of homes, and hundreds of vehicles. Although flash flooding is relatively uncommon on a calf rock, this isn't the case off the calf rock where hilly terrain leads to accelerated flows of water. In late September of 2012, a nearly stationary supercell thunderstorm deluged Cap Rock Canyon State Park with rainfall rates up to 6 inches per hour. The result was a flash flood that consumed a bridge and eroded sections of the asphalt road. So what happens when torrential rains fall on the Cap Rock? Well, as this photo shows, we usually see Playa Lake swell and engulf roadways for a mile or more. The real threatened situations such as this develops at nighttime when motorists are traveling at fast speeds along a stretch of roadway and suddenly encounter a Playa Lake over the road and don't have enough time to stop. Even if a Playa Lake appears passable, several inches or more of mud often reside at the bottom which will increase the chance of your vehicle becoming stuck. The three easiest ways to stay safe while storm spotting are to keep a safe distance at all times, always have an escape route, and avoiding target fixation which can distract you from other legitimate threats to your safety such as other motorists on the same road as you. To help fulfill the preceding safety tips, storm spotters need to be cognizant of their location relative to the storm's movement. For this reason, don't allow the storm to get too close as this will narrow your view of the entire storm to a small region. Specifically, with tornadoes, their motion and size can change abruptly and ultimately jeopardize your safety. When spotting at night, your safety becomes even more paramount due to limited visibility. For this reason, spotters should keep an even greater distance from the storm than in the daytime. Most times, lightning will help you discern storm structure at night, but keep in mind that identifying rotation with, say, a wall cloud will be practically impossible. Some supercells produce very low lightning, so be mindful of this as well. If you see a bright flash of light at ground level, this is likely a power flash which indicates a downed power line or failed transformer. These often accompany damaging winds and tornadoes, but can also occur from a direct lightning strike. Also, be aware that flooded roads are harder to recognize at night. As I mentioned before, not all supercells produce sufficient lightning to allow you to see features at night. What would happen if a tornado developed from such a storm? See if you can identify the threat in this video. No vehicle is safe in a tornado. Even in relatively weak tornadoes, airborne debris as small as stones can shatter windows resulting in flying glass causing severe cuts to occupants. This is a popular video that underscores how vulnerable vehicles are even in some of the smallest tornadoes. It's not uncommon to have area residents, spotters, and storm chasers flock to a scene of structural damage, especially after a tornado. Unless you are an emergency official or first responder, you should avoid entering the damaged area to allow officials to perform their duties uninterrupted. Only if you believe an injured person is in immediate danger should you attempt to move them.